Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me fine? Good. My name is Sonia Jimenez. I work for Jimenez and Associates. I'm very pleased to see such a nice turnout because we do the outreach. And we also do the outreach with Councilman Saldana's uh, staff as well. So I'm very pleased to see such a great turnout. It's a very important project, not just to this area of town, but to the whole San Antonio community as well as South Texas, because it could be a really great, wonderful premier park for all of South Texas to enjoy. Uh, just for housekeeping, I'd like to tell everybody the restrooms are down this hall right here. If you need to use the restroom, please uh, take care of yourself however you need to at any time. There are some refreshments on the back table over here. I'm just, did everybody get an agenda? Before I lose your attention, on the back is the comment card. Please be sure and fill that out. If your comments do not get recorded with the group that you're in, please uh, always know that you can turn those in. All comments, whether they're on the comment card or on the maps in front of you, will be considered as we create the new master plan. Uh, just to quickly go over the agenda, you, we had a small open house so you could figure out what was going on tonight in terms of the history and so forth, and we will be doing a presentation on that in a little bit. Councilman Saldana will be up in just a few minutes to do a quick welcome. Mike Frisbee with Capital Improvement Management Services will be uh, doing a quick introduction of the team, giving a little bit of background on the recent bond election and moving forward. Larry Clark with Bender Wells uh, Clark Design will be doing a presentation about the history and so forth. At that point, when he finishes his presentation, we'll take questions for clarification only. And when he finishes that presentation, I'll come back up to explain the process that we're going to do during the workshop portion of the meeting. So the maps that you have in front of you, I notice a lot of you are already looking at them, writing things down and so forth. As a group, you all are going to decide the five things that are most important that you want to report out. That does not mean that anything is going to be neglected or not looked at and when we consider what's going to be put into the new master plan. It's very important to remember that. And then last but not least, Nowcast SA has agreed to live stream this workshop. So if you know somebody wasn't able to attend tonight, they can view it on nowcastsa.com. Um, These cards are out on the registration table if you want to pick one up for your neighbors. And anybody that registered with an email address will be getting an email so that they know where to find that link as well. And you can forward that link to whoever you think is interested. And then the last thing I'll say before I turn it over to Councilman Saldana is if you do have comments after tonight, you can submit them to us. The information is on the bottom here. The only thing I ask is to please turn them in before Friday, August 17th, so that we can make them part of the meeting record. So are there any questions about just the general process that we're going to use tonight? Okay, very good then. Um, Councilman Saldana? All right, well, let's get started first. I want to go ahead and welcome everyone for being here. I'm, I, I really can't uh, hide the excitement I have for what we're going to be able to do today. I was, uh, this, just two days ago, I went over to the top of one of the hills at Pearsall Park. I was walking in, I was running down some of the trails, and I got to the top of the hill where you can see all of downtown, former Kelly Air Force Base, Lackland. You can look 360 degrees from the top of those hills, but what you could see when you looked at the park was that there wasn't many people, it was like a ghost town. This is a, one of the, what I think is going to be one of the best parks, but today is not a place where a lot of people are coming to. And so what we're trying to do today is change that conversation. And we're really, at the end of the day, telling a story. Because for most folks who are from the southwest side of San Antonio or from San Antonio have lived here long enough to know, the area that we're talking about used to be a landfill. Some folks know that, some folks nod their head because they remember when they drive down Military or Pearsall Road and point to the fact that that was where the city's landfill was from the 60s, 70s to the 80s. Well, what once was, I think, a mountain of trash, an area where everybody sort of congregated and take, took all the city's trash and moved it into Pearsall, we're changing that conversation. So we're telling the story of transforming from what once was, and we love to say this, what once was a dump into a destination, and we think that the best way to do that is to get input. And so we weren't the first to come up with this idea. I actually uh, um, pay tribute to association members who were from the area around here who recognized that this was a park that was being underutilized. 
I saw Carol Abbott walk in. She was one of the first members, um, folks who have been working at this since 2001. So there was the idea of using this and creating a huge master plan as to what could go on a former landfill, because we're talking about 252 acres of parkland. We're used to the one acres, the two acres. Here we've got 252 acres of what I think is just a canvas of opportunity. And so those folks put together a master plan in 2001. What happened with that plan was it sat collecting dust for a number of years. And so there was this great idea that was Pearsall Park, but there was just no reality to it because there was no investment. There was no money for it. Well, with your help and the help of those folks who voted for the bond, we now have $7.5 million exclusively just for Pearsall Park. And what that allows us to do now is to really turn what was, you know, a story of, of the city's dump or trash, moving that into what we think is going to be a jewel for the southwest side of San Antonio, for San Antonio. And we want you today to think as big and as creative as possible. We want not, at one point, the city, the Pearsall Park, it wanted everyone's trash. Today, we need your imagination. We need you to think creatively. And we need you to think outside the box. I want you to hold on to one idea, which is that if, if you're thinking about what to put on those lists, what this place should look like, I want you to think, what would bring me from across the city to visit Pearsall Park? What's going to be unique? What's going to be different? We all know what a park looks like, whether it has benches or walking trails, soccer fields. But think beyond that. There's been so many great ideas that I love to talk about. Somebody told me about a zip line. Somebody said a, a 5K trail that walks through there, a skate park, the city's best BMX bike trails, mountain biking. The, the ideas should keep going and keep rolling along those things, along those lines, because we need to make this a destination park, not only for those that live closest to it, but if this is going to be, and what I think undoubtedly, the best park in the city of San Antonio, then we need to have big ideas. And it starts here. This is where the story is told. And so in four or five years, when it's completely built out, you'll say, I was at the auditorium. I sat down. I was having these conversations. And now today, it exists. And so we need you to be as, as, as creative as possible. Think as big as you need to. At the end of the day, we got $7.5 million, and it sounds like a lot. But what we're going to take is everyone's ideas, put it into the new master plan now, and implement them as soon as we can get the authority to do so and start construction, we're hoping, by the end of you know, 2013 and really get moving on this. So I welcome everybody to have crazy time thinking of the craziest ideas you can imagine about this park because really this is going to be a product that is, it is coming from your imagination. And I think that if folks are going to accept the final product, they need to be part of the process. So I, I'm, I'm excited to get this, the conversation started about the best park in the city of San Antonio. So thank you for being here. And I'm going to go ahead and let them get started. They've got a great presentation to talk about what we're going to be able to do. So with that, I want to invite Mike Frisbee to talk a little bit more about the background of the project. I just wanted to get you guys flowing, get you guys excited, because I am. I've been thinking about this. So let's get started. Mike. Thank you, Councilman. I uh, appreciate your leadership. You know, I met uh, Eric, uh, Mike Frisbee, the Director of Capital Improvements, and as we uh, looked to prepare the 2012 bond program, uh, a year ago I had some discussions with the Councilman, and uh, he wanted to emphasize Pearsall Park and uh, make a significant investment if the voters would approve, and so uh, we appreciate you being a champion uh, for this project, and of course there's a lot of champions here tonight, and uh, we welcome you. Uh, we also appreciate the uh, Citizens Committee uh, for Parks through the bond process. There's a 32-person committee, and uh, they all agreed that a major investment in Pearsall Park uh, was important as well. And then it went on to full city council and ultimately to the voters uh, who agreed to the projects uh, throughout the city. So uh, we're off and running. Uh, tonight's a key part of that. I do want to recognize that we've got, uh, it's very important for multiple departments to be here tonight to hear from you all. Um, and so we do have Xavier Urrutia, the Parks Director, Xavier, and quite a few park staff over here. And we've got uh, Capital Improvements Management Services staff over here, uh, Solid Waste Management back here, uh, taking care of that park at this point with the landfill and so forth. So uh, we appreciate the support um, across the city. Um, I do want to uh, give a little bit of background. Uh, some of you already know this information. Others, this will be new, so this will be good to get everybody on the same uh, playing field here. Uh, 
the park is 231 acres as it is today. And uh, this was, as the councilman said, uh, the site of an active landfill from 1967 through 1982. And uh, at that time, a closure permit uh, was filed uh, in 1983. And the landfill is still closed, uh, closely monitored and maintained by the solid waste management uh, group folks in leadership here today. Um, and so uh, that is taken care of uh, on a regular basis. Uh, the master plan development, as the councilman said, that we, there is a master plan in, in place. Uh, it was created in 1999. So uh, 12, 13 years later, with significant funds now being provided, it's a great time for a, a significant upgrade and change to that master plan. Uh, but as you all know, uh, you get up on top of the mountain there, and it is incredible views of downtown, uh, incredible view, uh, views of uh, Lackland Air Force Base and the surrounding area. So it's a huge opportunity uh, for us and for the community. Uh, just to let you know what's happened so far, there's been smaller projects to date. Uh, phase one was the uh, dog park and the associated parking and uh, accessible trail up to the top of Sunset Hill. Uh, phase two was the development of the ball fields and open space, the disc golf course, and some parking. And phase three, that's back up now. Uh, we had an issue with our contractor. Uh, the bonding company is now taking over and uh, getting that project fixed, uh, finished out. So. Uh, you might have noticed they started uh, last week again, and it'll be about uh, 90 days to complete the project. And, and basically that's providing additional trails um, to the top of Sunset Hill, uh, Sunset Hill parking and uh, some playground components as well. So uh, smaller scale, that's the, the money we had to work with until this point where we can, as, as the councilman said, think a lot bigger picture here and much more impact. So again, welcome tonight. Uh, I do want to introduce uh, uh, Larry Clark with Bender Wells Park. It's important uh, as a city that we hire, we, we manage these projects, but we hire professionals, uh, landscape architects and so forth to help uh, because they, they have the experience, the expertise to take all the great ideas that will be produced tonight and uh, put those into uh, design plans and so forth. And this is really the start of a public process. We'll have future public meetings as uh, design concepts get shaped. Um, and much of tonight, uh, you know, along with getting the vision from the councilman, uh, a big component now uh, will be your input in the workshop setting here. Uh, it's gonna be really foundational for how this park develops. So with that, let me turn it over to uh, Larry Clark. Larry. Thanks very much. It's great to see a, a, such a good turnout tonight. We've had uh, meetings in the past with uh, quite a few fewer residents. It's great to see people from near, right nearby the park um, turning out tonight. I want to briefly cover a few things tonight. Um, history of the park, some of the current park features, and then talk about some of these potential new features uh, that could be put into the park. And as Councilman Saldana said, we're trying to go here from a dump to a destination and really create um, a wonderful uh, renovated condition. That, uh, as, as Mike said, was a sanitary landfill from 67 to 82, and it was restricted in access for about over 16 years. Uh, you know the boundaries. It's Pearsall Road and Leon Creek, and it's on the uh, Leon Creek Greenway which has just been recently completed, uh, about a one and a quarter mile from the trailhead all the way down to uh, near Quintana Road. Um, it didn't go any further because of the railroad tracks in that point, but uh, it's uh, wonderful. I think it's one of the best greenway uh, sections in San Antonio. Uh, as Mike said, that permit for closure was in 1983, and at that time it was identified as potential future parkland. But, uh, um, nothing really happened until the 90s when uh, some of the folks in the neighborhood uh, activated uh, staff and a uh, park master plan was developed. We worked on that plan in 2000. A lot of you worked on that plan as well. And uh, that first phase of construction was scheduled uh, right thereafter. Um, in that plan, we identified these incredible opportunities for views and visibility, but also the fact that we've got great infrastructure here. We've got a saws water reuse line that runs right along the edge of the park. 
and we've got Pearsall Road, which is great transportation and good connection. We've got great vegetation. We've got trees in the Leon Creek Valley, and we've got a hillside that's covered with grass. But the constraints of the site are such that we need to talk a little bit about that tonight and just you know, identify the fact that we've got a landfill on this site, we have slopes on this site, and we have a flood zone. But as we said in the 2000 plan, there's no major constraints to prevent the use of this site as a large urban park. The park area is considerable. And uh, you can see it here with Leon Creek at the bottom and Pearsall Road at the top, military drive over there on the right. The 100-year flood zone of Leon Creek comes right up to the park and covers a bit of the park, including those recently completed uh, nature trails that are uh, off to the right side of the park. If you look at the landfill areas, that's in yellow, uh, those occupy a good portion of the site as well. And if you look at the slopes that are over 10%, and this isn't a slope that you'd want to uh, park your car on, you might run straight up it, but it's, uh, it's a 10% slope is one in 10, and that's a pretty good steep slope. Uh, that occupies a good portion of the site as well. And if you put all of those together and look at the impact of that on the site, you can see that we have these areas that are constrained by one or all of those three things. And if you take away that and look at the unconstrained areas of the site, these are just areas that are flat, they're not on the landfill, and um, they, uh, do n they're not in the floodplain. So these are uh, areas that could accommodate just about any use. In that 2000 uh, master plan, we had a group process with three groups reporting back and telling uh, the community what they wanted to see in the park. And some focused on active recreational uses, some focused on nature trails and passive uses. And out of that came a plan that has active zones, passive areas, and natural areas. And there's a copy of that on your table that shows that on the left there, the dog park, the athletic field, the sports, that's a very active zone. The center portion was seen as the passive area. We have a, a kid's play area. We have a trail to the top of the hill, that type of thing. And there on the right in the floodplain was more of the natural area. And that's where we now have not only the Leon Creek Greenway, but we also have these wonderful nature trails that are uh, in that area. But out of that also came that same goal and a consensus that we have to have a unique park. We have to make this a place where people will come from all over the city and all over the region and have those active, passive, and naturalized areas in separate portions of the park. So again, those, those constraints just mean that we can't put deep footings for buildings, for example, in the landfill. We have to provide ADA access. Uh, we want to provide ADA access, and we have for all the trails, including those sloped areas. And it takes some engineering and, and uh, control. And then we can't put any structures in the flood zone. Um, but we do have those hills and views, nature trails, Leon Creek Greenway, the dog park, the athletic fields, uh, those trails, and those are great uh, amenities that are there today. Um, the disc golf and athletic fields, and then that dog park, people come from, you know, up by, I've met people there from, gosh, Selma, you know, and shirts that come all the way down with their dogs to walk their dogs there. And as Mike said, under construction right now is another additional portion of the, of the park work that includes a new play area, um, toilets, seating, a kiosk, some artwork, uh, new ADA access all the way to the top of the hill. And if, when you get to the top of the hill, there'll be picnic tables and benches and an overlook up there. And we're also putting in some planting and irrigation uh, in that area. So here's an aerial view of the park today. If you're looking sort of from over top of Leon Creek. The dog park's all the way at the top, and Lackland is there at the bottom. And that, if you see that yellow outline is the park boundary. And if you look at the park from the other direction, um, you can see it's a huge area. The hills are in the center there. Um, and we have a lot of land to work with. So as Councilman said, the funding for this future phase of the park was included in the 2012 bond program, and that bond passed. The voters uh, accepted that. And now it's time for you to let us know what you would like to see in the park in the future. 
So um, again, we want to attract people from outside of the area to create a setting that wouldn't be found elsewhere in the region. And this has happened in other cities. Other cities have taken tens of thousands of acres of old landfill and converted them into parks. A couple of great examples are Fresh Kills in New York and Mount Trashmore Park. And I thought Carol Abbott's invented Mount Trashmore. But at, we, she's been calling this Mount Trashmore for years. But uh, there is actually a Mount Trashmore Park in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And uh, it is a, a site that hosts a lot of athletic running uh, events. They've got a great skate park. They've got uh, some ponds and water features there. They've got great nature areas that they've created. Fireworks, 4th of July, that's the place to go. And they've even put the seal of the city right up on the hill face. And Fresh Kills is um, another one. It's um, really got a, a marvelous master plan that's just being put forward now, and it's going to really convert that place into an incredible people place. Um, so what's Pearsall Park? What's it going to look like? What are we going to do with Pearsall Park? What would you like to see there? On your table is a list of all sorts of ideas of features and activities that might be put into the park, but there's also a lot of other activities that we haven't thought of yet, and that's where you all need to put on a, your most creative thinking caps and come back with what would you like to see there. And some of those features are going to fit into the park better than others, and we'll work on that in the master plan. Um, there may be some active uh, things like, again, running and cycling, um, tobogganing down the hills, who knows. Um, we've got thoughts about BMX bikes, uh, about uh, fitness activities, uh, sand volleyball, all sorts of activities for kids, including soccer, basketball, maybe swimming, maybe fitness um, classes, soccer, running, kite festivals. What a great place to fly a kite. It's always a breeze up there. Um, there's all sorts of activities that we can think about here that would uh, really support, be supported by this park, including a farmer's market, perhaps, or community gardens. Um, I know there's a great vegetable place just down the street here that's under the trees on the, on the uh, uh, Ray Ellison. But uh, wouldn't it be great to have a permanent facility like that on the weekends where you could come and buy fresh produce? Um, all sorts of ideas of the zip line. I love the idea of the zip line. But um, there's also there's ropes courses and other things that can be plugged in, of course, slides, and all sorts of adventure things for kids. And uh, taking advantage of the hills, I think, is one of the things that we could really look at um, incorporating into the master plan. Nature has a place here, too. And we really need to think about beauty and making this hillside just a gorgeous place, as well as the areas down below. Stargazing at night, perhaps butterfly collecting, tree planting, tree farms, all sorts of things that incorporate nature. And there's a huge group of folks who love to bird watch on the Leon Creek Greenway and get up on the hills and look at, look at the birds. Art should be a part of this as well. And there's opportunities for art to be plugged into this park and make it something that becomes a destination for people. And just make it beautiful. Everything we could do here to make it more beautiful would be wonderful. So what do you want to see here in the future? That's the big question for tonight. And we want to get your in input. And this master plan is going to serve as a guide to future development. And Sonia is going to come up again and tell us about our process for how we're going to gather your ideas here tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Larry. I'm just going to give you all some quick instructions. Um, you do not have a facilitator, but I would like for you to choose somebody at your table to be a facilitator. The facilitator's responsibility is really to keep track of time and make sure that everybody is heard that wants to speak. If you do not want to speak, that's fine too, but we encourage you to at least use the comment card to get your uh, voice heard. Um, if I can ask some of you to congregate, or maybe you can move to a different table, it's not going to be very good for just one person. Um, we really want you to have a dialogue. Um, 
I briefly put the instructions on your agenda. So for the first few minutes, um, take some time to introduce yourself if you haven't already to the people around you. Take a few minutes just to brainstorm. Forget what Larry said about constraints and all this, you know, we only have so many acres of land. Tell us what you want. It'll be his job as a professional to say where it can go, where it can't go. And when we come back to update you, we can tell you why or why not it wasn't incorporated and then we can get back to the constraints. But for tonight, we don't want you to concentrate too much on the constraints. We want you to concentrate on what would you like to see in the park. So after you do a little bit of brainstorming, I'm sorry, before you do that, select a recorder, somebody who writes clearly that can take notes right on the map. Anybody can write on the map that they want to, but we just want to be sure that it's clear enough because we have to process them at the end of the day. And if we can't read it, your thoughts are going to be lost. So please be sure somebody does that. Again, without any limitations, what would you like to see at Pearsall Park? This is the main theme of the whole um, process that we're using tonight. Discuss your ideas and then agree on the top five that you would like to see. And at the end, in about 30 minutes, we'll call you all back up and we'll ask that you select a reporter to report out the top three things that you want to do. You don't necessarily have to agree on everything, but you need to agree on what you're going to report out and you need to pick a reporter to do that for you. So we'll be spending about 30 minutes doing that for the, um, the next 30 minutes. Um, I have 7.25, so right before 8 o'clock, we'll uh, get back together and do, we'll report out. Everybody will be heard, every group will be heard, so don't have any fear that your group won't be heard. And then uh, we'll give you a little more direction before we start that. Larry has one more thing to say. We also, if you, if you, get, if you have a question, just raise your hand. Um, Ben and Iris from my office are here is it for technical questions. And um, if you have um, you know, any kind of technical question, just uh, let us know and we'll be happy to help you out. Sir, you have a, a, a quick question? How many do you think we need? That's the, tonight we're just, we want to put forward ideas. Um, and if you can, you know, identify parking for what? What sorts of things, you know, we might want parking for? Sure. Yep. Yeah, okay. It's great. We're, that's, that's a first thought to put down on your plan, and uh, we'll get moving. And, ag and again, just real quickly, um, if you think it's more parking, say more parking. They're the professionals, and they have to figure out how many to accommodate the activities that are going on at the park. So if you think it needs more parking, just say that. And quickly, I'm happy to see all the young people, because you all should be out there using that park as well. Councilman Saldana is one of the few that uses it when it's 100 plus degrees outside. <laughs> we have one more question. I, I, how the park lose 50 something acres? I'm, we'll, we're going to get to the answer for that. I'm not sure where they all. Some people say 230, some people say 250, some people say two. We did acquire a lot of property uh, around the park in um, 2000. And so there may be some discrepancy with old surveys. Don't let that keep you from starting right. thinking. But don't, yeah. Let's, let's get going. That's right. Everybody's ideas. So don't think about any constraints. All right. And we'll be walking around to make sure everything's going okay. Thank you all. Okay, so I'm Charlotte Ann Lucas with Nowcast SA, and I am here with Councilman Ray Saldana, and uh, he called this meeting today. <laughs> yep, yep, that's right. That's tell right. me, tell me what you're hoping to accomplish here tonight. So it's 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 our it's our idea that we think people are very creative, and they, when given the opportunity, they will come up with amazing ideas. And so we wanted to collect residents from all over the city today to talk about one thing, which is Pearsall Park. And Pearsall Park is a wonderful story that we're telling today, which is that it used to be a former landfill uh, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And now it can finally be turned into a park. And it's 252 acres, making it the third largest in the city. What we think, after everybody's creative juices and imagination have come together, will make it the best park in the city. Um, depending on how wild and crazy their ideas are, we're trying to put them in. When we passed the bond um, in May, it, it allowed us to use $7.5 million just for this park. 
So we want folks to think about what, you know, whether it's it's the best skate park in the city, expanding the dog park, BMX, mountain biking. I just heard a great idea about a fitness, uh, outside fitness center. Um, we want those ideas because we think that if this is going to turn into a destination park, not only for those that live around it, but we're thinking beyond that. What is going to take somebody from the, the north, the east, the west side of San Antonio to really draw them to this park? And it's going to be unique features, and so that's what we're looking to get today. Yeah. It sounds like a really exciting process. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, pumped. we're pumped. And it's not even a question of having to say, and, and I hope we can go find the money. You've already got the money. Yeah. Right? So, the, so the hard part really was trying to get the money. And uh, we, we had ideas uh, of turning this to a park back in 2001. And so the problem was that folks had all these ideas. They put them together. And it sat for about nine, ten years because there was no investment. There was no money for it. So. Because of the bond, now we've got the investment for it. Now we just need people to get creative before we go out and start building the dream that is Pearsall Park. So when could that building start begin? Well, we're hoping that the, the, the input process and the design takes about maybe three or four months so that by 2013 we already start seeing the first shovel or construction project in to get this going. That's yeah. not very long. We're, we're hoping that that's what it takes. Barring any unusual circumstances, uh, we want to get this one uh, off the ground as soon as possible. Well, so so for uh, the next few minutes, I, I suspect you want to get in there and eavesdrop. Sure, and, and, and folks maybe plant some of my own <laughs> ideas. But really, this is an opportunity that we hope it'll grow organically from the residents. What's what they want to see, and we're hoping that they really will dream big. That's neat. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, and yeah, my pleasure. and I and I do want to let you get back and and you know start picking their brains as well about what to do. <laughs> exactly. Yep, that's right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm back again, and now we have Mike Frisbee with the City of San Antonio here. And Mike, um, what is the department that you work, work it's, in? It's called Capital Improvements Management Services, SIMS, and uh, we manage the city's projects. So whether it's a, a great park project like this one, or building roads, or airport projects, or convention centers, uh, whatever it may be, libraries, uh, we work with our different departments to get those projects uh, built for them. Okay. So. So this, this, in this instance, um, we're here to talk about um, what to do with money that already has been approved for that, this part. That's right. right. There's been the, the voters have already spoken with the 2012 bond, and we're excited about that. They approved 140 projects all over the city. About 60 projects, uh, 60 of those are park projects. Now, this Pearsall Park is, is one of the biggest that was approved at $7.5 million. And really, because this is a, a huge acreage, you know, 235 acres, it's an old landfill that now is a closed landfill, and it, and it looks like a mountaintop over there, and it is an ideal place to build park infrastructure. And so t today, or tonight, what we're doing is, is really a first step, and that is working with the community in a workshop setting to hear from them what do they want to see in this uh, big destination regional park of the future? This, uh, this process, I've, I've seen similar things go on with, with trying to be strategic about planning in the city, but this, this kind of saying to people, hey, what are your ideas? That's relatively new, right? I mean, within the past... It is. You know, the, the old traditional way would be a, a huge group setting. They would hear some speeches. And then one by one, they would come up to a microphone and somebody would grandstand for 15 minutes. And really, the, the people wouldn't get a chance to speak. So this smaller setting in a workshop where they can talk amongst themselves and uh, brainstorm a little bit, and then they can report out to the whole group. You know, we have a couple hundred people here, but each table is going to be able to report out to the greater group and talk about what, what their top three elements are. But we're capturing not just their top three, we're capturing all of their discussion points through this so our professionals can go back and say what will work in the park, what won't work. And so after tonight, we'll spend some time uh, with our, our consultants, our private consultants, and uh, they'll spend a couple months looking at all this information, seeing what works in the park, and then coming back to the community to say, here's what we heard from you all, and here's what can work, here's what we're thinking, get some more input as we continue. And then ultimately we'll get to where we can start designing the park elements and start building those park elements. Oh, wow, wow, fun, fun stuff and, and really, really um, engaged, I mean really participatory. Yeah, definitely yeah. grassroots. Yeah. Uh, the, these people uh, live around here, uh, this park, but then we, I've noticed a lot of people from throughout the city. Hmm. 
and they're seeing that this is a, a big destination park for the future, so they want to have a little say in it as well, so that's good. Okay, so for folks who are either watching live right now or who are replaying this video after the fact, is it too late for them to put in their two cents? No, it's not. We can, we can always take input through our Sims department, uh, through the, the San Antonio.gov website. We're taking input all the time. There will be future uh, community meetings as well. Uh, so the, the input can continue all the way into the design process. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. Thank, Thank you so you. much for taking the time and, um, and uh, letting people be part of this process. Thank you for covering it. Thank yeah. you. So we're back again, and I'm here with the director of San Antonio Parks and Recreation, Xavier Uritia. And um, we were just talking about uh, the city's original Parks and Rec director, a guy by the name of Ludwig Menke. Um, right, first whose, commissioner of right, the Parks right. And he did, among other things, um, he designed Brackenridge Park. Correct. Right? And um, um, I think things are being done a little bit differently now than they were then? I think it's really a, a change in how I think uh, we as citizens, as park patrons, really utilize our parks and also I think how uh, we integrate an urban environment with a natural environment. I think, you know, Breckenridge is an example of a time and place and also kind of a destination that maybe didn't necessarily blend with uh, the, the surroundings where nowadays we really look at how do we integrate uh, parks into neighborhoods? How do we make neighborhoods more sustainable? How do we use these to strengthen families and and to really offer people alternatives and different opportunities that they may not have uh, on their own? Absolutely. That's, that's all very fascinating because I mean on one hand I love going to Brackenridge but on the other hand yeah that integration with with the neighborhoods is not really I mean there's the big arches of the gate that you go in. You know? Correct. It was much more of I'm going to a place where now I think people are really asking they want to be part of the place. They want to they want to be part of the ideas that are make up the place and they also want to be able to uh, feel that the place is theirs and that it is really integrated into the neighborhood, great to the greater community, and can really form a, uh, take a lot of different functions. Mm -hmm. You know, really filling gaps where, you know, whether it's uh, both passive green space or active green space, or in some cases where we have parks that share space with libraries or share space with other amenities that, you know, the greater community needs. Well, on, on, in this section of the city, this is a really big deal, acreage-wise and idea-wise. No? Huge. It's really it's going to be transformative. And it's really what the councilman envisions for this area. I mean, we have a, a resource that hasn't been tapped yet. And so tonight is really the first step in asking people, hey, we are able to do something different here. We have resources dedicated that you as voters approved in the bond election. And we have the raw... Uh, asset as well, having the park land available. So he's asking people to think, be, think out of the box, really dream, and try to uh, see what we can come up with is ideas that again really look at addressing the needs of a population that is changing, a population that will grow. We have kids here tonight, we have seniors here tonight, and really it's, it's again, it's about a community place, it's about a place that neighborhoods can come to, it's about providing options and alternatives uh, for our uh, community. So are your colleagues in other cities really jealous of you because you get to like, you got this en enormous blank canvas to work with? <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, there's always, I mean, we, you know, there's all different kind of parks and we love all our parks. I, I say, you know, I never really compare parks. Each one is so unique and individual. Uh, and really what we have is, when I think about San Antonio, we may not have more parks than any other city, but we really have unique parks. Like you mentioned Brackenridge, very unique, has a lot of different features, zoo and museums. We have other parks that have natural areas. It's about really getting in touch with nature. We have other parks that, you know, really look at a spiritual side. They really look at trying to offer a place of solace and and uh, be able to go and maybe read or just pray or think. And so really, again, I think what we have is a unique situation in San Antonio where we have, a, you know, we have a lot of history here, we have a lot of new parks, we have a lot of really old parks, you know. Uh, so I think what we, we see tonight is being able to take some of those ideas and hopefully what we have is the best of all of those together in a whole new park, you know, Pearsall Park.
So, so have you heard ideas that, that really ticked your clock tonight? Well, we have a lot of ideas. I mean, there's people that, that talk about splash pads, you know, there's people that talk about there's an existing disc golf course that they like to see redone. There's, you know, runners that want to come here. So again, I think it's a, that combination and finding the balance. And so it's really not, especially because in this area of the city where we don't have a regional park, where it's not just one note. We really want to see a symphony of ideas really working together and really that creates beautiful music for the community and that is a park. Neat. Neat. That's really exciting. Yeah, we're real excited about <laughs> That's it. That's really, really exciting. Well, thank you so much for taking the time hey, and thank for, you. for doing this in such a wonderful way that, that it jolts everybody's imagination. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you a lot. Appreciate thank it. You. Okay, folks. The way we're going to do this is we're going to give you about one minute to report out your top three. Maria and Kelly have wireless microphones. If you guys can raise your hands so they can see you. Kelly's over here. Maria's over here. We're going to simply alternate from one side of the room to the other and just go in order that way. When you get up, please say what group number you represent, the top three things, and I'll give you very little time for commentary so that we can try and get out of here right on time. Uh, if number eight needs some more time, we'll give you some more time. That's not a problem. But we will start over here with number seven. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're group number seven, and our top three is sand volleyball, tennis courts, and water play area or swimming pool for children. Uh, sand volleyball, I, I love sand volleyball and I really drive all the way to 281 in O'Connor to play some uh, sand volleyball, so that's something that I would like to see on this side of town. Uh, tennis courts also is not nowhere nearby and water park, uh, it's sometimes expensive for parents to take their children and it's so hot here in San Antonio, so it'd be nice to have something close by too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, group number seven. If you're, one of your top five have already been noted, then skip to something else. Say something new that you have that hasn't been heard already. Uh, Kelly, you're over here. Are you guys ready? Okay, what we have here is um, a paintball area. A lot of the kids I know in this area, they like playing paintball. But that's something, I mean, with rented equipment, that'd be really good for the kids because some kids can't afford it. I mean, so we can kind of just rent out a couple guns, have a little paintball area. That'd be really nice for a lot of these kids here. Um, also, handicap-specific equipment, such as swings and playgrounds, because, I mean, I have a lot of handicapped friends, and with their kids, it's harder for them to get a hold of everything. They can't go to a lot of parks. It's Things are very challenging for them. It's the and a bigger playground with a shaded area. The one at Miller's Pond is, I mean, it's small and it's, it's no cover. It's we have kids that come out there and they're burning their fingers left and right. And see, they're getting burned. You see, you see their legs burning from the slides because there's no cover. Yeah, we're group three. Thank you, group number three. Sorry, we were trying to get that video up earlier, and so it popped on right when you started, so I was a little bit distracted, but we did capture what you said. Um, I will direct you, Larry is taking notes over here as well, too. This, that's not the end-all and be-all, but please be sure whatever you have us to get is on your map or on your comment card. So, Maria, group number one, Carol Abbott. We were really a group. <laughs> um, our three items are cross-country course capabilities, a larger or second dog park, and conservation education. Very good, thank you. Over here. Just stand up and just name, tell us your group number and then give us the top three things that you wanna see at the park for your group. Group number four. I like to see at the park a playground that's shaded with a merry-go-round, uh, with the seesaw and some swings, 
and the fitness equipment, a basketball court that has shade, and a bus oh, up day, and speak up a just a little bit. Secu oh, okay, security and general and bike patrol. Wonderful, thank you. You did a great job. Okay, this group right here in front. We wrote down about 12 things, but you said we can only do three. <laughs> so we'll do three. Uh, what is I'm your group number? Six, table six. Okay, great. Um, we would like to see maybe a concert at night, like maybe once a month, to have a, a place where we could have a concert of some kind, music or movies or something like that. Um, another water fountain. Uh, either at the end of the trailhead or along the trailhead, along the trail. So drinking water, drinking water. water, yes, ma'am. And uh, if we're going to hike up the, the hill, uh, we're not all in, as young as the councilman <laughs> or as fit as the councilman, but when you go up that hill with no shade uh, and you get to the top of the hill and there's nothing to drink, and there's still no place to sit down to recover, to start back down or go to the other side. Uh, we'd like to see some trees and maybe some water at the top of the hill. Great input. Benches. Is there, thank you so much. You. Okay, table number five. Um, first five things that they mentioned are really, really uh, basic and even-handed. Uh, they want an ADA playground. There's not one on this part of the city, as far as anyone can remember. Um, a, th there's a skate park request here, a parking expansion adequate for park activity, uh, basketball, swimming pool, and water play area. Uh, there's some things that are interesting here. Number one, that there is a creek that has water in it all the time, so we would like to like enhance the creek in general with the basic idea of you coming to this park to make it to the creek. In other words, that's the really big deal. That's the reason why everyone would show here is to make it to the creek. So we do some work. Larry over there is a landscape architect. They know how to do that. So we included <laughs> that. And the other thing is really basically there's a spot for an amphitheater that's sort of in the terrain already. So we wanted to include that too. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, group number five. Hello, number eight. <laughs> All right. The things we're not going to talk about is walking trails, running paths, lighting, <laughs> and uh, and all the uh, the particular thing you have in here for athletics. We're not going there because it's going to happen anyway. Okay. Uh, what we are going to discuss is kind of like the comment of the amphitheater. But I think the amphitheater is going to be very popular. If you put them in, they're going to be extremely popular. So you're going to need more than one. Two or more amphitheaters to cover a multiplicity of things will put a lot of people in. Having said that, now you have a problem with getting around. Now, yes, you can either put parking in three different areas, sufficient to solve the problem, or you can do it overhead, or you could do a railroad train, small ready rails dropping off and coming back to where the parking is letting people get off. This is we put down as ADA because an awful lot of the elderly won't even visit unless you have something, some way for them to get around to it. And while we have five items, I'll stick to my third one, which is the concession stand and rest area. A building that's AC, that has AC that uh, you, can, you can go and rest, cool off, have something to eat, drink, Enjoy yourself for a while before you step out in the heat again. We have lots more, as you can guess. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, group 10, uh, our top three uh, was a decommissioned aircraft area for, for kids to interact, um, let their imaginations, you know, fly, I guess if you will. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I... Some of us experienced that as kids, and yes, we did have airplanes in my day, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I did experience that, and uh, they had decommissioned airplanes in Kingsville, Texas, and uh, a lot of us got to play in those things, and it was, it was a great experience for, for little kids. 
Another one would be um, a playground village, similar to what's on, uh, uh, I guess, what's the, the street? Ocean Drive in Corpus Christi. They have, it's a very large uh, play area for kids. Uh, and probably the gravity sports would be our, our number three, because I think that could be a combination of different activities. Very good, thank you so much. Great input from all of you. Let's see, where are we? Right here in the front. Um, hello, um, we're representing group number nine, and the three things that we had chose to talk about were the, the skate park, to have one of the biggest skate parks here, like on the south side, and then the other one would be the stargazing with the telescope. And then two is having like mural space to help make the, the park nice and have like kids from the community or people from the community come help and like decorate their own park, you know? So that's Very it. Very good. Thank you. Great ideas. Hi, we're group number 12. And as an overall theme, we wanted to make this park to be self-sustainable to where as we get a LEED certification, to bring out, uh, to bring the, the public, to gain the public's interest and also bring other people from, from outside. Um, one of the major things we would like from our group was like a botanical garden, oh. a botanical garden. Um, the other thing was to have a swimming pool and a skate park, a skate park. Great, thank you. Good evening, everyone. We're group number 13. One of the most important things that we talked about first is in a park is the safety and security because, you know, there's going to be a lot of family and children there. So we're thinking about uh, implementation of an um, emergency call system. So if someone gets attacked by a wild animal, there's an emergency, you could be able to use that to um, call law enforcement. Another thing we talked about was uh, ford and tree houses for the kids across the park. They don't necessarily have to be on a tree. Um, <laughs> another thing we talked about was community gardens uh, for to allow our community to, you know, come out and maybe do their garden and things like that. So those were the top three issues that we talked about. Thank you. All the way over here. Hello, this is eleven uh, table eleven. Our great idea is over here. Our first one is going to be train and sky ride to travel around the park. As you all mentioned, we do have ADS, ADS people and also seniors and that attend this park. So we need to make it accessible for them as well. Our second um, idea was on the mounds to have inflatable, inflatable movie screens and also for concerts. And also bleachers that, that can be moved around to you in case you want to watch the stars or you want to see a different side of the city. The third and foremost and the greatest idea we have <laughs> is to have barbecue pitch, picnic tables throughout the park so we can have for parties in Easter and name this park Brackenbridge of Southwest. <laughs> Thank you. We can just put the train and it'll be like the Cadillac of the Eagle at, at Brackenridge, right? Hi, I'm speaking for group 15. Um, our three things were the amphitheater as well um, and basically the beauty of the park, uh, re-enhancing the landscape, lots of trees like oak trees and maybe creating a natural spring and uh, definitely a community pool alongside with a children's playground. And that's it. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Get on? Okay. Um, you know what I'm going to talk about, Councilman? Your group number? Group By the, uh, 17. Okay, great. And although this young lady in blue and the young man over there uh, already beat me to it, but it's the community garden. Uh, the next one would be the interactive uh, water play for the kids. Uh, the covered uh, or picnic areas with shade, the trees. And uh, if anybody wants to talk about the garden, come see me. I'm ready to talk about it. All right. We may be able to get some hands on over there. Thank you so much, Group 17. Okay, we're, uh, we're Group 19. 
And a lot of ours have already been mentioned, but one thing we kind of want to add to the community pool is maybe it be indoor so that it's available, you know, year round. Um, one other thing is the pavilions, you know, to put pav pavilions on the hilltops. Because right now, if you go on the hilltops, the benches that are there, it's real hot. You know, no, nobody's going to go, you know, in 100 degree weather. But if there's shade, it makes it a little more manageable. Um, so pavilions on the hilltops. Um, and of course, your essentials, electrical, parking, and restrooms in the common areas. Uh, one thing that we kind of went out of the box on is like food truck areas. You know, that's kind of becoming a little more common here in San Antonio. You know, if you have the food truck areas where people can, you know, go and buy their mini tacos and stuff like that. Um, Put the microphone a little bit closer to your mouth. Closer? Okay. And um, that, that was about it, it, other than, you know, enhancing what's already there, like the athletic fields is kind of uneven, you know, kind of evening that out and make it more inviting to, uh, you know, little league teams and stuff like that. So that was ours. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm speaking for group 16. Okay. Um, we, we have some of our stuff was already mentioned, but 5K trail, actual trail. I know there's an existing uh, walk a greenway there, but match it, make it an actual 5K trail, uh, some batting cages, and a rope course. Rope course. Rope course. Right. Rope course. Great. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you all so much. What group number were you? Thank you. We're 16. 16. Thank you, group 16. Over here. Group uh, 14, we had similar ideas. We had the 5K running track, we had the swimming pool, and we had adventure play areas. It just sounds exciting, the adventure part. <laughs> um, also, golf drive driving ranges. The husband and the little one have to drive to San Pedro to go hit some golf balls. So one in our area should be fun. Great, great ideas. You have one over here? Yes, thank you very much for this opportunity. A uh, couple things. Number one, we would, one of our ideas would be a pavilion with an observation deck at top of the hill. It would draw more people to kind of climb up there, encourage more exercise, and of course the view is outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is, we wanted to add water features, uh, ponds, fountains, waterfalls, that will draw people more to the nature side of the creek. I think that's another selling point. Uh, most importantly, the reason I came here for personally is the redesign of the disc golf course. Um, Live Oak has a tremendous opportunity. They more than likely will probably get the 2014 World Championships. It will bring in an amount, it will bring in a lot of um, income to San Antonio. And I believe we should, we should help in that process and grow the sport, number one, and it won't take any more land for the redesign of the disc, disc golf course. It, it's a... Uh, it would be a major selling point. We have a lot of disc golfers here in the south side that travel regularly to the north side because of the fact that there is no benches for uh, the tee areas. Um, it, and, and the mowing, the, it, that's another big problem too. But if we can get those situations done, a redesign, we would attract more people from the north side to the south side and show off this park that you guys are wanting to build. It'll be a great opportunity. Thank you guys. Great, thank you. What table were you? 18? Thank you. Are we done over here? Any other ones? Any other group? Very good. Wonderful, wonderful work you all did. I'm going to turn it over to the councilman so he can go ahead and wrap it up. And we might get up here a few minutes early. Please be sure and be reminded that nowcastsa.com is a resource to see the workshop online and tell your other neighbors that weren't able to make it and to turn in your comment sheet. Um, if you haven't done so already, or you can just leave them on your table in the middle, in the center of the table where your map is. So, Councilman Saldana? Well, first of all, big round of applause for Sonia, her group, and, and her staff who's out here working. The reason that we're not going to lose anything that was said or recorded today on those papers is because they are going to do a lot more work after this meeting. After this meeting, they're going to go back and help package it so we can turn in a um, uh, a modified master plan. That's the, that's the sort of what we're going to go away with here. But you know what? You did not disappoint. I was, I was a little worried that we were going to fall into the basic things, but you guys are crazier than I thought. 
I mean, we had some amazing ideas, and that's exactly what we were looking for from our young people here to some folks who have gone through this process before and have seen and waited. And at the end of the day, what we've had is just, you all have been extremely patient about waiting for something like this on this side of town. And so I wanted to make sure to hear the ideas that you guys have cir been circling in your head. Um, so as a follow-up, uh, we won't have another follow-up meeting. What we'll have, or actually, we, we may actually put together a follow-up where we'll, it'll be us talking more to you and presenting the master plan and what we can see as some of our engineers come through it and talk about what was so crazy it didn't fit or what was such a good idea that we, had, you know, we couldn't have gone without. So I want to thank you guys for visioning and dreaming really, really big. And uh, I, I really appreciate the youth group who came out here. I appreciate everybody who took a little bit out of their Tuesday night to, to make it out here. And a big theme that, that, was, that was heard that I heard over and over was the fact that we have to travel to other places to get these things. And so what we're hoping to do is reverse that trend where we see that everybody says that they have to travel to Pearsall Park to come and see these amenities. And so we're hoping that at, at some day, you know, that's what's going to be the narrative. That's what people are going to be talking about. And it started with the story, like I said, turning the first page of the chapter right here with your voices. So thank you again so much for being here. Be on the lookout. Since you were here, you're going to get a follow-up um, to be invited back because we have your contact information as long as you gave us the right stuff. Um, so we look forward to having you back to talk about it. And once again, thank you guys for being so amazing and being as, as wild and crazy with your ideas. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. So I'm here with Larry Clark, who is with Bender Wells Clark Design, and you are um, going to be taking all of these ideas and trying to see what's possible. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We've got a lot of great ideas tonight. Yeah. yeah. So, so I heard some really um, different kinds of things. What did you hear that 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 you were that you were going? Oh, interesting. Well, uh, transportation. One thing. This is a huge park. So moving people around in the park uh, might be something that um, we can c accommodate. And you know, the whole idea of this park being sustainable and a representation of what well, collected trash for years, but we didn't have recycling back then. You know, we have a lot of opportunity here to start integrating every kind of recycling, mm -hmm. reuse, mm -hmm. low energy use. I uh, heard a lot of people say, let's get a LEED certified building, let's use solar energy, let's use wind energy, let's use recycled materials in everything we do. So maybe that transportation system runs on biodiesel or, or uh, some alternative fuel or electricity or natural gas. I don't know. There's all sorts of possibilities there. You could bring back the uh, gondolas from Hemisphere Park? Yeah, yeah that wasn't a thing. Yeah, people wanted a chairlift or a yeah. people mover, mm -hmm. a overhead people mover, which is great. You know, it's a great idea. Now, putting that into a landfill maybe <laughs> might be a little bit tough, but we'll look at it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we've got, um, I think the circulation is, the, is one really critical factor of any mm -hmm. park plan. We've got to really think through how to get people moved around the park. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really fascinating because yeah. you don't think about that too much when, a, when, when parks are smaller. Right. You know, yeah. or, or when you come to the perimeter of the park to park, you know, and, and the then walk in. The fact we could accommodate a 5K run entirely within this park is something that, you know, hadn't really struck us uh, early on. Yeah. But the idea is, you know, you have so many groups in San Antonio that have charity runs. They have to hire police to close streets so that people can run in the streets. We don't have to do that here. We could have an entire 5K run within this park so that the cost, the thousands of dollars that they spend on, on police escorts and that kind of thing could be eliminated. And now, of course, we'd have to have other facilities to accommodate that. We need to have places for people to sit and watch. We need to have places in the shade. We need to have concessions and water and that type of thing so there's a lot of support facilities that go along with any event like that and then the other great idea I thought was the whole idea of concerts and an amphitheater or um, movies in the park bringing people together you know utilizing the space as a weekend venue mm -hmm. so that'd be great mm -hmm. This has really been exciting. Yeah, it's and, been a great night. And and um, the other thing that I still can't get over is that it's not a think of ideas and then we'll go out and try to raise the money. It's a, we have the money. Exactly. Come to us with ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Unlike our first phase, <laughs> right. when we designed the dog park, it was the first dog park in San Antonio, because we wanted this to be a destination. We wanted people to find this place. 
and come here and realize, hey, I went over to the southwest side and I took my dog to a park and I didn't have a bad experience. You know, I, everything worked out great and I'm going to go back. And so the dog park, the disc golf, all of those sorts of ideas were ideas to really draw from the entire region. Mm -hmm. So now what can we do to build on that? What can we do to make this a place that people drive from, drive, fly, come to here from international uh, destinations, you know? We go, we go to great cities in, in other countries mm -hmm. to see things. Other people should be attracted to, to San Antonio to see the great things that we've got. And that's such an exciting thing for the, for the South Side? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> it's really okay. great. There we are, South San Antonio ISD headquarters here. Yep. Larry, thank you so much for it's taking the time. My pleasure. I really pleasure. appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks.